Welcome back to the Meeple Marathon and our continued coverage of Merchant's Cove. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Alchemist Merchant. Again, this is in the core box. And uh, in my opinion, this uh, this and the Captain are, after the Blacksmith, probably the, the most easiest to grasp. So these are kind of like your medium level one of your medium level merchants so if you have somebody that's kind of familiar with um, strategy games or is looking for a challenge or has played once before already then you might want to dip the let them dip their toes in some alchemy so the gimmick with uh, alchemist is very similar to the game potion explosion there's a bunch of marbles essentially in your alchemy bag here of the four uh, goods colors and you're going to be dropping them into the decanter up here which is a very um, you know well crafted uh, piece of cardboard here as you put it together and and set up in just a way this board easily is the one where the dual layer uh, comes in as, as such a nice um, quality of life upgrade because the marbles will stay put in your cauldrons but setup is very straightforward you're going to take these four they're almost like gems, but they're very like, you know, deep black. And these are Ecor Extract. So, um, you know, thematically, this is like, uh, I guess the fumes of the, the toxic portion of each uh, chemical that you're brewing that is stopping up these, uh, you know, I, I don't really know what they're supposed to represent, but these are covering up your um, guild sponsorships. So just like with the blacksmith, we saw that those dice that we could add to our um, engine would reveal sponsorships here. When you uh, remove an ecor, it actually comes down into your cauldron and becomes a kind of permanent wild in your cauldron that's just gonna sit there, it's never removed, and you've also revealed your sponsorship. So again, in twofold, you are increasing your engine and unlocking uh, scoring at the end of each market base but once you've set out your ecor extract one on each guild sponsor you're going to go ahead and take and start filling in your decanter now it is important that you kind of draw these out one at a time um, you don't get to uh, decide you know which order you're going to drop these in it's supposed to be random and there should always be eight marbles in your decanter so anytime you take a an action where you're going to remove these ingredients at the end of that action you're going to refill the decanter one at a time with however many is missing so that it always looks like this essentially you're filled to this brim and that's it that is all you need to do for setting up for the alchemist obviously you want to grab your the alchemy specific board you can see this one has the brew action on it so that's the easiest way to tell with this one plus it's got some cauldrons on it and also their sales stand here to place your goods on all right so then let's talk about the actions that you can take uh, as the alchemist so obviously uh, it has the two standard actions here that are on everybody's board the gain a townsfolk and the activate townsfolk we'll talk about this bar here in a little bit the majority of the actions that you're going to take are pulling ingredients out of the decanter. And you can see here there's three spots. They're somewhat overlapping, but each one is its own space that you can go to and spend two time, two time, or just one time, but gain a corruption. And now it makes a difference as to what row you go to, because when you go to said row, you're going to call a color. So in this instance, you would want to call red. Once you call your color, you're then going to remove from this row all marbles of that color or black, because black is wild. So in this instance, we would remove both of these. All these other marbles would fall down. Now, in the process of calling a color, any number that, or any dice that fall in, I mean, not dice, sorry, any marbles that fall into that row that you are adjacent to that match your color, whether it be black or red in this case, you would also get to pull out. So this is not necessarily a great um, example here. Let me kind of manipulate things here so that you can see how it would make a difference. So yeah, I want that one at the bottom. 
and I want to pull. You know what I need is one more. All right, one more black here. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's just say, for example, this is what our decanter looks like, and we want to pull out as many ingredients as we want. Um, and I'm going to talk about how you use those ingredients here in a second, but generally you kind of want to get the most bang for your buck. It costs a lot to pull stuff out of your uh, ingredients decanter. It costs a lot of time. So you always want to, you know, get the most ingredients you can. So let's say we go here to the middle one and we call yellow. Now, if I pull this one out first and then they drop down and then I pull this one out and this one out, I've ended up with three ingredients to add to my cauldron. Now let's just say, for example, if we backtrack here and I put all of this stuff back, boop, 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 we're back to this stage again. If I make the decision to pull this one out first, all right, I'm still pulling out, I'm still pulling out, I'm still pulling out, all right. I've now gained four. So when you call your color, you can choose from either side. You can draw from either side as long as there is the color there and you have to draw the color or the black as it enters that row. But how you choose or which side you choose from at any given moment will make the marbles fall in a certain direction and can increase or set you up for future turns. It could increase how many you pull this current turn, or it could set you up better. You can see now in this instance, I've also lined up my greens. So in the next round, you know, obviously I'll have to leave this spot. I can't pull from this row again. I could pull from the bottom row or the top, but I have to leave that action spot. But when I come back, I can call green and know I'm getting at least two greens. So that's your main actions, is pulling the ingredients out of your decanter. And again, you pick a row and then you call a color and you pull out whichever side you choose from, but you have to pull out all the ingredients that match that color and all the blacks that start in that row and any that might fall into that row as you're pulling marbles out. Now you don't add any until you're done with your action. So you don't just, you can't just keep adding marbles in and make it infinity. Um, you complete your action, you place your marbles down here, then at the end, you're gonna refill your decanter. So let's come down here and take a look at our cauldron. Each one of them has three spots, and at the beginning of the game, all three of those spots are open. So how do we produce goods? Well, if you have two of the same color good, right here, you can produce a small good. So in this case, we would produce a small yellow. You could also, do this because black is wild. As long as you have one of the color necessary, you could not take this, for example, and say, I'm gonna make a yellow because you need at least one of the proper color. You could have this set up and you could create a yellow and these are the two you're pulling off. You'd leave one black behind. All right, now let's say you have this, for example, and you want to create a large yellow. Again, you need two matching colors and then any third. So in this instance, you would remove all three to create a large yellow. You could also, if this was the scenario, create a large yellow because this can mimic this to make two yellows and then a random one of any color. You pull these off and you create your large yellow. This could also create a large blue because you have the wild there. Now wilds come at a cost. I'll talk about those here in a second. The last thing you can do is take any three marbles. It doesn't matter what color they are. They could all be matching. They could all be blacks for all we care. And you remove them all and you're gonna pull down the ecor. Again, we talked about this earlier. What that does is reveals your um, guild sponsorship, but also fills a permanent spot in your cauldron with a wild. So it's as if this was permanently there. So there you go. Um, so those are the three things you can brew out of your cauldrons. Obviously there is the large and the small goods. And then the last thing is revealing your sponsorship and getting the e-core down. 
And again, the color of your ingredients, you need to have at least one color of the ingredient you're trying to brew the good for. Um, blacks can mimic another marble, but they cannot be a marble, uh, be a specific color. Now, when you pull ingredients out of a cauldron, if there is a black marble in it, you're gonna set that over here in um, this, uh, what's this cauldron called? Um, well, I forget what the, it's like the, the, uh, the gunk cauldron or something like that. But you're basically, when you use the wilds, when you use the black, anytime you have to use them to brew, they're gonna go over here. Ecor always stays put. All right, so this is the benefit of pulling your ecor down. It stays put, fills that spot, but all of your black ones have to go over here in this cauldron. All right, the, rem the colored ones are gonna go back into your alchemy bag, right? If at any point you have accumulated enough black marbles, there's only but so many in the bag here, enough black marbles, if I could find one more to make my point. There we go. If you have to start putting marbles on this top row, for every one of these top spots you fill with a black marble, you have to take a corruption card. Now, it's pretty easy to stay ahead of this because the action that you can take right here is to clean out your uh, waste cauldron. And you simply take all the blacks and you put them back into the bag. So, the only time that you're really ever gonna run into where you're filling these top three ones is if you have a lot of black out here. It just so happens that a lot of black has come out to your decanter. You put a lot of black out here. And when you take the brew action, which I kind of skipped over there, you end up probably pulling, if you have a black in each one of these maybe, you'll end up putting four blacks, but you'll be producing four goods, so maybe it's worth it for you to take one corruption card because you could get rid of it later. Um, but for the most part, anytime this starts to get two or three in it, you come over here, you spend one time, and you clean it all out. So the action that I skipped over, I started talking about, but I didn't actually put my person there, is the brew action. So this is similar to the forge action with the blacksmith. Um, you go here, you spend one time, all right, so it's very cheap to brew, and you can brew from all four of these cauldrons. Again, you can choose what type of good you want to brew or whether you want to bring your ecor down and you can leave goods, you can leave cauldrons alone. You don't have to brew from them. So basically your main actions here are pulling from ingredients from the decanter and then coming down here to brew to create your goods. And again, when this starts filling up with black marbles, you come over here to clean it out. And that's it. That's basically all you need to know to um, play as the alchemist. Now let's take a brief look at the uh, alchemist's town folk board here. And um, we start here with the scrubber. So this is return any two ingredients from any cauldron back to the alchemy bag. The most useful um, thing to do with this action is to remove two black marbles from your waste cauldron. This is still a cauldron. These are all cauldrons. And so this you can scrub for two. Or if for some reason you have early on put some marbles out here and you see that the, the people, the customers who are coming down are not matching up with the goods you're about to produce, you could technically scrub something out of these cauldrons. It is an option, but that's the scrubber. The next one is the forager. This one you can take any one ingredient from either the decanter or from another cauldron and move it to another cauldron. So in this instance, this is a great way that if your marbles aren't quite lining up and there's just one that it, you're like, oh, if I remove that one, they would all stack up perfectly. This is a great way to pull that one marble out without having to you know, call a marble and take them all out. You can pull one marble out of there or if you've got one marble already in your cauldron and you're like, God, I really wish that green was over here, you can simply move it. And so you only get to do that once. Here you get to scrub out two marbles. Here you're just picking one, either from here or anywhere from here and moving it. It's gotta end up back in a cauldron. 
This one's pretty straightforward. You take the brew action similar to this, but you're actually only getting to brew two cauldrons. So you have to pick which two you're gonna brew from. And then last but not least, just like everybody has, the discard one corruption card. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. That is everything you need to know to play the alchemist. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Uh, if you are enjoying these videos, please consider giving them a thumbs up. And if you are interested in being part of the remainder of the Merchant's Cove coverage, please consider subscribing to the channel. Once again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.